You carry your life around in your pocket. You spend hundreds of dollars on your cell phone, spend every waking moment with it. But how are you protecting it? More and more, smartphones are becoming a, a huge target for criminals. They can be stolen, they can be hacked, they can be exploited any number of ways. But luckily, smartphone makers have been taking notice and they're giving you more ways to protect yourself. Today, I'm gonna go through just a few of the brand new ways that you can defend your smartphone and more importantly, the data you keep on it. Now, in device services, Apple's made a lot of headlines recently with the new Touch ID fingerprint scanner they put in the home button of the newly redesigned iPhone 5S. Now, this is a leaps and bounds better than the old simple swipe to unlock that most people have been using because they don't like or don't use the passcode. Use the passcode! And it's really good that you're using a passcode even if it is just the Touch ID fingerprint scanner. However, for anybody in any real monetary or societal in interest, you really don't want to use this method because, let's see, the Touch ID was hacked in less than two days using a method from 2004. It's the problem with all fingerprint scanners. Fingerprints are just really easy to hack. Now, for the most of us, that won't really matter because nobody's going to go to all that trouble to get into your phone. But um, for people who have, like, say, the nuclear launch codes on their phone, you might want to use something else. Sorry, Mr. President. Now, moving on to Android, we have a plethora of ways to lock your phone. Lock your phone! I don't care how you do it, just do it! Now, the default options on Android are plentiful. We have the simple swipe, which isn't really a passcode at all. We have the swipe patterns, those little stars and lightning bolts and hearts and whatever else you use. And then we have QWERTY and we have numerical passcodes. In addition to that, most newer phones have also had face unlock, which is you look at your phone and the cam and that little camera on the front will see if it's you, you looking back and then open the phone. Problem being that five-year-olds have figured out that if they use a picture of mommy and daddy, they can get into the phone and rack up in-game purchases. So only use face unlock if you're camera shy. Moving on, certain kinds of phones have special unlock methods. For one, for instance, it is the Moto X. Because it relies so heavily on touchless controls, it needs special methods to keep the phone unlocked and open to commands. Now, because of that, we get two nifty little features on this phone that I think would really be nice if they came to every Android phone. The first of these is NFC Unlock, called the Motorola Skip on the X. Now, what happens is you get this nifty little felt clip and then you have three stickers. And whenever you press the phone to any of these, it'll unlock your phone. Now, the little clip, quite honestly, it falls off really easily and is really easily lost. But those stickers are amazing. And once you burn through that clip and the three stickers, pretty much NFC tag will work with the system. All right, now NFC tags, they're a lot like the RFID tags on your credit cards, which means that yes, there are methods of copying them and using them to get into your phone, but that's tech that not really a lot of people have access to because it can be used to hack into credit cards. Now, moving on, we have one last method from the Moto X, and it's called Trusted Bluetooth. And this is a method that I am very much interested in for a very important reason. Now, with most other things like the NFC, you have once you just tap the thing, it goes in. It completely gets rid of your lock screen. But with trusted Bluetooth, once you connect to a trusted device, you have to unlock your phone once before the phone just stays unlocked. Which means that if somebody were to steal my cell phone and they stole my Bluetooth headset thinking that I could, they could use my headset to get into my phone, they'd still have to know my passcode at least once to get in. And this is very, very helpful. Now, once your phone is gone, gone stolen, lost, what have you, it's gone and you need a way to protect it. Your life is on your phone, your data is on that phone, and you want to keep that out of their worthless little hands. Now, for this method, Google and Apple have both implemented ways to prevent your phone's data from being lost and to prevent thieves from get, doing anything with the phone. Using iOS 7, if, you're, if you report your phone lost or stolen, uh, Apple can implement an activation lock, which can prevent the, prevent the phone from being restored or reactivated without your app specific Apple ID. The only thing that can be used on that phone is the num number in order to return the phone. That said, this is only for iOS 7, so every older device that is not getting iOS 7 is still pretty open to attacks. Now, the Android version of this has been installed on every phone from running Android 2.3 and up, and it works like this. Without doing anything at all, if your phone were to be stolen while you were distracted watching me, you could go online and you would be able to find your phone to within 25 feet. However, if you go into the Google Settings app on your phone, you can enable Google to remotely lock or wipe your phone in the event that it is stolen. And there you have it. The ways to protect your phone, and more importantly, the way to protect your data on it. Thanks for listening. And remember, keep your phone locked, keep your phone safe, keep your phone yours.
hit me, remember to hit me up on Google Plus or Twitter, and I will see y'all next time.